Islam, love, truth, peace, freedom, justice, Prince Jonathan L. Coming to you by via YouTube. I'm gonna do a little educational information only demonstration. Um, like give my caveat, the following information is not for legal purposes or uh, legal purposes or uh, if you need a lawyer, go get one. Um, it's not for financial purposes. You need a, an accountant or a tax agent, go get one. Um, who else? If you need medical uh, advice, go get one. What do I do? I'm a doctor of oriented medicine, licensed massage therapist, um, and I'm a special Morris emissary, most importantly for the purposes of this video, uh, coming to you on behalf of the Morris Science Temple of America here in Al Andalus. That's uh, the Isle of Flowers, all right? Uh, MST of A, Temple 2A1, North Carolina. Um, big ups, you know, honors and respect, as always, to the Prophet Noble Joe Ali. You know, uh, big ups, big much respect to Asir, the Duke of Tears. Um, and, uh, okay, so let's go ahead and just jump straight in. Okay, so... What I'm about to give you is a quick synopsis of what a lot of people are, are desperately seeking as far as information towards nationality. Now, um, the, way, the method in which I'm about to give you this, or the, the way I'm about to lead you through uh, my sources of information is based on modern, contemporary, you know, available information. So I went to websites, which I'll name uh, shortly. I got the information from their website. And through my science and my, my process of deduction and reasoning, I came to some own, my own conclusions for myself. So this is my opinion. This is based on my own research, my own time, my own energy. All right. And so I, I think it's also in your best interest to do the same. Research for yourself. Don't trust nobody else. You know what I'm saying? You should never, ever lean on the, the, uh, the information of somebody else without proving it or investigating it for yourself. Okay. You gotta be grown-ups. This is what we're dealing with. We're dealing with grown-up adult affairs. No minors. Okay, so there's no minors that should be watching this. If you got minors watching this, they should be doing so with parental advisory. Okay, your parent, if you're under the 18, age of 18 or you think like you're under the age of 18, you need to have a guardian watching this video with you. Okay, we're gonna go through some big words. Alright, so I also suggest you go get yourself a copy or a, a, you know, a fourth edition or older of the Black's Law Dictionary, a Bouvier's Law Dictionary, uh, Miriam's Webster's Dictionary, uh, a thesaurus or two, you know, English Dictionary, okay, because, um, and also you want to, I mean, you got Google, if you're watching this on your phone, just Google this information, you know, check out what case laws are, um, figure out how to ac actually read a dictionary, okay, meaning look at the word, determine whether it's an adjective, a noun, or a verb, or an adverb, and then just, and then read into the definition, okay, because that way you understand how things work. We're gonna go through some concepts that are from like basically the from the fourth grade all the way up to PhD in a very short amount of time, okay. So um, this video is for any and everybody, okay, but you need to have an open heart and open mind to receive some of this information. Once again, this is under love, truth, peace, freedom, and justice. If you love truth and you hold your peace and freedom dear, then you'll do yourself the justice of investigating, okay? I self law and master, Islam. So, straight into this, what I'm about to show you is, um, not, I'm not trying to be controversial, I'm not trying to be sensationalistic, I'm just trying to show you from, from the very beginning, so that way you have no questions to ever ask me, about who you are and why it is that you're, I'm identifying myself or why you may consider identifying yourself in a certain way, all right? Now, um, reason why is because, uh, quick introduction to a, a concept known as colorable law. You need to be aware of what colorable law is. Colorable law, a perfect example, you, uh, a police officer engages you as you're walking or driving or traveling at your, in your own private capacity or in your own public capacity, whichever, all right? And 
if he if he is a let's say putting a, a radio call in for backup, he's going to register you based on what he can physically or visually observe. Now, keep that concept in mind. What he can visually and physically determine as what you you how to identify you. In some instances, for in for the purposes of colorable law, black male, approximately five foot eight inches. You know. Now, just on that alone, that description could be anybody, okay? Now, that is a conspiracy. You're going to need to look into what a conspiracy of, of in deprivation of your rights is. That's Title 18, USC, okay? That's, that's another little tip, a little jewel for you to look into. So, if, if you're in any kind of criminal interaction, criminal interaction, meaning where they suspect you, right, of committing some form of crime, they are identifying you based on what they can physically determine. So let's get into why um, you need to not be considered black. For one, I'm not going to go in on some super hard moral science stuff with like, oh, black means death, and we're talking about civility more too, and everything like that. If you're not familiar with those things, I strongly encourage you to look into them. However, black is a description of someone that comes secondary or is impure or an offspring of something that was previously there that basically got dirty okay so if you are secondary or if you are if you are not aboriginal or original or indigenous to any land you are not of that landmass basically you're not a nation you're not of that nation all right you're not a national of that nation you follow how this goes so, if you are black, that is a concept that is given to, you look at 1865, where these things kind of came into play, which moves into 1871, the Christian slavery codes, all right? Negro, black, colored, these are all terms given to identify slaves, not freed men, okay? Not freed white men, not free white men, okay? Not free pure men, okay? So, here it is that, once again, we're dealing with a concept of purity, purity being... Um, identified in the color of white, okay? So if you were to identify yourself as an indigenous or an, an original or aboriginal being to any landmass, you are white or pure or of the land or land or lord of the land, excuse me, all right? So that's how that whole thing goes. So I'm not going to go all deep into that. Look into it for yourself. That's what this is about. Study, study, study. And when you ask me what to study more, I will tell you to study yourself. Prophet. Noble Drew Ali. Let's look into their, their forms. The Social Security Administration form. I'm going to read some information from off of their information, okay? And this is going to help out certain instances or certain individuals who are looking to basically try to nationalize because they're interested in some free stuff. Nothing about this process, nothing about nationality is is free. It costs your time. It costs your energy. It costs your trial and error and success. And if you know how to study and you know how to listen, if you have the eyes, the eyes to, to see and the ears to hear, you'll get your remedy, okay? So, Social Security number is one of the first pieces of personal identification, okay? So here we go. Use this application to change or correct your Social Security number or record, okay? Original Social Security card. To apply for an original card, you must provide at least two documents, proof of age, identity, all right? Changing information on your Social Security record, i.e. a name or citizen change to correct the date of birth, you must provide documents to prove your identity, support the request to change, and establish the reason for the change. Now, if you did something like if you get married, like, you know, in the cases of most women, even some men, they take on the last name of the woman, or, the, you know, the woman takes on the last name of the man, you know, basically the surname, Okay, that's a whole nother link, uh, lesson altogether, but you should look into surname, S-U-R-N-A-M-E, all right? And that'll help a lot of us that are in some form of debt, you know, or financial or national crisis, correct your personal in information, okay? So, support the request to change. As document supporting a name change must be recent, identify you by both your old and new names. So... Look into what those documents might be. Limits on replacement of Social Security cards. You may receive three per calendar year and ten in a lifetime. All right? Do not uh, change of name 
changes to a work authorization legend do not count toward these limits. So if you if you lost your social security card and you're not sure whether or not you qualify for another one, you do. Evidence of identity. You must provide current, unexpired evidence of identity in your legal name. You must show your legal name and provide biographical information, i.e. your date of birth, age, or parents' names, and or physical information, photograph or physical description. Did you hear that? Physical description. 10 minutes, 27 seconds. I'm about to get in a little bit more, all right? Forms of uh, proof of your identity must provide a driver's license, a state-issued non-driver identity card, or a U.S. passport. All right? We may accept other documents to show your legal name and biographical information. All right? Evidence of immigration status for those of you who are from one of the adjoining islands, the Caribbean, you know, the adjoining islands of the Americas. You're still American. You're still a national. You're still born of the land. Lessons, lessons, lessons. I'm trying to keep this brief. All right, so let's go into the more important information. Question number five on the SS-5 form, 